Actually, I came from the future, a hundred years from now, in a time machine. Surprised? I am. Goodbye. Aren't your eyes open now? No, they are closed. You're a liar. I can see you clearly. I've got very good eyesight, better than 2010. Your eyes were open. Were you looking at me? They've really been closed. You can come back and check. Were they really closed? You sound like an idiot. You are an idiot. You're right. I am an idiot. Baca. Baca no cha. <laughs> oh my God. I hope you guys have missed us. Because uh, I missed us too. <laughs> and we've gone in a sandwich format today. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Science Fiction Remnant. I am your host, Robert. And uh, you can see we are all in the studio. Yeah. And this is Geo Captain Chaos. And we got one of the special, most special people in my life, my role model, my brother, Ricardo. I'm the younger brother, but um, I try to keep him in check. Sometimes. That's how backward things are. <laughs> I look up to my younger brother. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. It's all good. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm just really a guinea pig. <laughs> and if you're a follower of the show, uh, and especially if you're listening to the show and not watching us live on YouTube, which you should, uh, you should go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and ring the bell. Yes. Um, you probably sound uh, that uh, voice uh, for Ricardo sounds very familiar. And uh, if you, um, one of those old, um, one of our old uh, listeners, uh, especially from season one, you'll probably, uh, you're right, because he was on our episode on Narnia. Um, and uh, just as a quick reference, if you look at our show notes, uh, you'll see a link to that episode so you can listen to that. Um, that great sci-fi episode, if I may ask. Yeah, <laughs> right. It, it was not probably <laughs> necessarily sci-fi, but it's it was really fun. I think um, it was the first time that I had the chance to really go deep into a movie that I love, and um, it's a lot of appreciation for you guys to hear. I think it it, it gives a good service. Awesome. The science behind talking like you is brought to you by Ricardo. <laughs> 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 and you know, let's let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, Gio, where is the mad scientist? Uh, he's on holiday. I mean, he's in the future, man. We ha we gotta actually have, have to talk to the protagonist of the movie we're gonna talk about today. See if she can bring him. Yeah, don't you guys don't worry. He, you know, he's still with us. Uh, we're just recording this uh, during our break, um, and it just happened that we we're all together, so might as well. So. Uh, you, there is going to be a lot more of the math scientists going forward. So oh, yeah. No worry about that. And my friends, my fans were friends. Yes, we were on a break. Okay, Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. Yep, yep. We, were, we definitely were in the break. Like, you, you know when you when you hang out with people that you don't hang out that much often, and then there's they have all these inside jokes? Yep. And, and this is like, I'm right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there is a question lingering in the air, and I usually do this to our math scientists. He's always wondering, oh, you know, you mean that question. Well, I <laughs> wanted to ask that question. What have you guys been watching? Uh, and Not I, rom-coms or Star Trek. I, I go first. I no go, Star Trek. I go first. <laughs> what have you watching? Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> With my cool wife. She's the best. But I want to so switch lucky. it. I want to switch it up. Uh, switch it up a little bit. I uh, watched also uh, upload a oh, season yes. two. Yeah. Um, I finished it, and you know, it, it they always do this to me. It, it always ends where like you want to know what's going to happen, and I'll have to wait for season three. Um, but that's the idea to keep you hooked and watching it. Well, you know, you could still do it where you can end the season and, and if the show is good enough, you come back to, to another season, but you know, regardless, yeah, it, here we are, it's, uh, you're going to come back to it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend that we did it, did an, uh, an episode on uh, the first, uh, it was season one, episode one mm -hmm. on our feed. I was it, I can't remember if it was season one and season two. It's been a while now, but uh, yeah, you should go to our back catalog and, um, and listen to that episode. If you have not watched that, that 
TV show, I strongly recommend it. The more episodes we get, the more complicated it's going to get to just remember from the top of our heads. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Imagine when we are like in episode 400. Oh, yes. It's like we're going to be trying to record things that we have recorded like in the first season and we just didn't remember. Which, Imagine you know, if we got a fan like, you guys have two episodes about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's actually, I think, honestly, it's, it's actually okay because, and we actually talked about this in previous <laughs> episodes where... You know, as you watch something, your opinions on that one thing changes. And and as you grow, your thoughts changes. So it, it, we always talked about this and, and how I, I I like to watch or listen to other podcasts, do mm-hmm. episodes that we do, because I really love to get the different perspectives on that one thing. So it, it actually would be great for us to redo and it show that we have done just to listen to that, to our own very perspective, you know, different perspective change from the original episode that we did. But, True. you know, that's I just mean, there's bit. plenty of episodes that, that I wish personally that we could redo. Yeah. Yeah. Because I like it that much. Like, you know, it's like having a discussion with somebody and three hours later, you're in your house and then you're like, oh, I had this great thought now for the conversation, but it's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you would think like, what can you do after making an episode three hours about something? And then you can actually do three hours more. Yes. You? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Have you been watching anything sci-fi related? Actually, I, I did. Um. Last week, and I, I watched uh, Interstellar for the tenth time, probably or twentieth. It's coming. And um, that movie, it's like you know, so, some movies are good, and then you know, the, like next time you watch them, it's not like the first time you watched it. But this one is backwards; like it's better the more you watch it. A few movies I've seen that have like so many importance in every single thing, every single dialogue. So that's a big one that we we recommend. For some, watch. some movies are good, and then some movies are good. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you watched any Star Trek? Like, I mean, sci-fi lately? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I gather that you don't like Star Trek. Uh, it's all right. I mean, I enjoy the movies. Don't hate on me, fans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I enjoy the movies, and I can enjoy a good episode. Hey, we and, got and have a pointless discussion with Robert where we are gonna just disagree. And I'm gonna just speak on him. Hey, hey, fans, <laughs> fans, help us. We do have a hotline. So you wanna call 1305-563-6334 and leave messages for our very own Captain Chaos uh, um, as to why you love Star Trek. And uh and also join our Discord and just you know, just help me, you know, pummel, pummel him. Tell you what, guys, <laughs> at 1k followers, I'm not asking for too much. At 1K subscribers in YouTube, I will try. I will start chronologically to watch the Ooh. whole Star Trek rabbit hole. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's recorded not only on audio or on vi- on. It's also on video. <laughs> we have proof. So you guys, 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Uh, but I mean, watching, uh, I've been playing uh, my favorite of all times, very uh, hated by everybody, game Cyberpunk. Nice. Actually, I just redid the finish, a new finishing that I never done before. It was fun as hell. Uh, I did that for those few selected special people out there that do play it and enjoy it, like our friend Angelus. <laughs> just plugging him <laughs> in right there. Uh, I did the ending of like in the space, uh, in the space that like, you go into space to do a, a mission to like crash into a, a a casino, just like in Cowboy Bebop episode three, actually. Nice. Freaking cool. Nice. Uh, it was a shame that you don't get to do anything in space. It just ends when you're like just throwing yourself at, at the outer space. You get to go to the moon? Uh, you are like nearby the moon and you're like in the orbit and the casino looks like the casino in Cowboy Bebop. Nice. But there, there is a reference to uh, H. I, I mean, no, I don't get to. <laughs> I don't have my Lucy there. No Lucy. Oh, no man. Lucy. <laughs> it was sad because they killed Rogue in that ending. <laughs> <sighs> the, let's not talk about it. And if you guys want to know, uh, we did an episode, did we? Right? Uh, yeah. And um, it was we, fun to see him traumatized. Yeah. So uh, all I have to say, thank you, Angelus. He traumatized him like <laughs> as much as he traumatized me to watch what dream, what dream makes, what dreams may come. Yes. Oh my from god. From Robin Williams, which is no <clears throat> sci-fi, but it's like 
like what? What can I say? It destroyed. It's me. like a chainsaw into your heart, infinitely opening. <laughs> well, I, I know what not to watch now. Yeah, <laughs> that movie will, you will be crippled mentally. It destroyed me, and I went to the theaters to see it, and I love that movie. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but besides that, man, I mean, uh, this past week I watched Matrix, the first one, and Reloaded too. That's like nice. my comfort TV. Uh, nice. What else? Sci-fi. Uh, I try to restart uh, watching. I believe uh, the anime from Cyberpunk too. I watched like three episodes, and that's about it. I mean, there's more stuff, but they don't necessarily sci-fi. Nice. Okay, so. It seems that that's our cue to go into the next segment. We are Science Fiction Remnant. This is the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. We are the Caribbean Science Fiction Network. We are Mono Rats. We are One Accord Level 2 Podcast. This is Jesse from Sudden But Inevitable and Open Pike Night. This is Sci-Fi. And for this, this Sci-Fi guys, I want to remember you to whenever you're online, guys, the hashtag, this is sci-fi, which is everywhere. I actually been posting some cool stories in our Instagram. That's where I'm mostly uh, active, but it's the beauty of most places in social media that have hashtag is universal. You can use hashtags everywhere. And whenever you're enjoying something that is science fiction related, just accompanied by this is sci-fi. And I promise you, you're going to find so much better discussions. It's like, that magical key that helps you actually unlock those silos between uh, IPs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's it's awesome. I mean, and we've been having actually very great activity too on our Twitter or X. Yeah, sorry, Elon Musk. Everybody's gonna keep on calling it Twitter. <laughs> I don't know why you call it X. Nobody's gonna call it X. Uh, but yeah, Twitter. <laughs> and and I mean. Keep on keeping the love going around, guys, and keep that hashtag going. It's been growing immensely. We love how much, how far along we have come through and how much it keeps on growing. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever you guys are looking for it, just do that. I actually, that's how I go to pick fights and just contradict people just because, you know, you got to piss off some people sometimes. Yeah, so, so now you know you can use the hashtag this is sci-fi to pick a fight about Star Trek with uh, very own Captain Chaos. Yeah, imagine me discussing with you Captain Star Trek when I just watched the movies. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Now, have you guys have any experience? Well, Ricardo, I don't think he used this is sci-fi. Uh, but have you have any any experience with this sci-fi this week? I, yes, I have been posting, um, and you know me, I'm, I'm big into the scientific articles that I, that I find. Uh, there was uh, one that I posted about the, uh, there's this, um, this, this university um, that is uh, just open in Texas mm -hmm. uh, and is dedicated to uh, the research of warp technologies. Yes. Uh, and awesome it's video. so exciting to see that there's an organization um, dedicated to just, you know, to making warp technology a reality. Mm. Um, so, you know, kind of stuff like that, aside from articles for sci-fi movies that I post in there. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly active um, in that uh, because every time I read something interesting, I would, put, I would just want to share with you guys. Um, and, and you've probably seen it. And if you follow us, you, you've probably seen it by now. Uh, and it's also uh, on our Discord channel. So, yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the best place for you to find us actually all day long. Uh, just messing around, talking with our followers and fans and friends, collaborators. You, uh, you, you get to see me. So freaking awesome. Memes. You get to see me fly. <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, Robert been doing a flight simulator and, and he's been sharing the flights and he's awesome, man. It, it looks just super real. And I just go there and try to make it crash. <laughs> oh, and just as a point of reference, because uh, I know it's kind of uh, different to see like the actual image, especially when it comes over the internet, it, it, mm -hmm. depending on your your connection to the internet. Uh, but um, I actually had uh, Ricardo uh, fly on my rig uh, with the uh, Quest 3. Um, what was your experience uh, in the comparison between watching it and actually having the headset on? It, it, it was very impressive. I, I tell you, um, even when when you when you turn the plane 
sideways in order to turn you you get dizzy like if you if it's actually happening it's a, and you see every detail as impressive as even like the chips on the glass of the plane i was i was very impressed i was and i landed the plane yes with his help for sure <laughs> <laughs> i was still in the chair while he was turning but it was around. it was it was <laughs> way it's like i was expecting one or two and it, i got a 10 for sure nice nice that's because robert's a good teacher <laughs> would actually rate you the 10, even though if you broke the plane. I got an A and I almost broke broke the, the assembly at the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, that, that would have been a really expensive uh, repair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you landed safely, um, you know, not safe for the plane, but safe for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't put a price on life, but you can put a price on your plane. Yes. All right? Oh, yes. So... And, well, before we move on, actually, you said it, but I want to remember everybody that you can give us a call for anything sci-fi related that you would like us to talk about, any questions that you have that you would like to discuss about, or any discussions you would like to open. And mm-hmm. Besides, you could always go to the Discord, too, and, and have those live conversations with us. But if you like a message also to be played, you want to send a message to a friend or something and want to use the podcast also as a medium, we're more than happy to play your message. You just got to go ahead and give us a call to the 305 305- Five six three six three three four, and again I'll say three zero five five six three six three three four, and you leave us a message. And if you like, we can we'll be more than happy to actually play it on our next episode, um, and respond to it also if it's a question directed to any of us. So just remember that, and we'll be here for you soon. It's it's really cool because if you leave a message and um, it's part of a, like a conversation that you want to start. Uh, we play it on the show and, and we can have a conversation. It's, it's like the closest thing to being on the show without being on the show. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's really cool. So you guys should try it. Imagine that, that even an episode can spark from a question. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. That's true. And then you can say, Oh, that episode, it's because of me or something. Nice. And it was because of you. There you go. So um, I'm going to try this one more time. And see if I get lucky, right? I'm going to give it a try. Here we go. So for our next segment. Shout out. <gasps> yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, for this shout out, actually, we had two special people that were one of shows, actually. They are actually shows that one of our favorite collaborators and a new show emerging that I actually have listened to a couple of episodes. They're pretty awesome. The first one is the Movie Drone Podcast, and you can find them on Twitter. Yes, not X, Elon Musk, <laughs> Twitter. You can come to my show and actually discuss that about if you like. Maybe I can fish him out like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I repeat again, the Movie Drone Podcast, and you can find them on Twitter, movie underscore drone. Uh, thank you guys for sharing our content, the repost, uh, and all the love and spreading it throughout your audience and everybody else we appreciate it uh i want to let everybody know you can guys go ahead and pause right now and go and check them out uh you can find them in any uh listening platforms yeah so go ahead and give them a listen and follow them they're awesome and second last but not least actually uh our dear friends from cinema recall the burn the burn you're awesome man (laughs) something awesome is coming everybody i'm not gonna tell you what but something awesome is cooking with uh, Cinema Rico, they're going to come to our show for 2024 for the best episode. It's going to be uh, our mad scientist favorite. Oh, yes. Yes, Ray, you love it. I know it. And <laughs> if you guys follow, and we're not going to say much, yeah. but if you follow our Discord channel, uh, our Discord server, you'll know what we're talking about. Yep. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you want to join. You have a quest. <laughs> Entirely. Now you have a quest. You need to go and find out. Uh, but go ahead and also pause right now. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a long format, so we're not worried about that. We know we'll be here. Go yeah. and giving a follow. Uh, the Vern is awesome. Cinema Recalls always talking about those great classic movies that everybody loves that have really shaped up what's pop culture and filmography to today. Uh, it's just awesome movie after awesome movie. Great, great insights and, and sharing conversations about. All of it. So go ahead and give him a follow and a listen. They're everywhere, that even YouTube. So there's no excuses. Subscribing, hit that bell too. And thank you, Vern, 
we'll hope to see you uh, soon in our show. Yeah, We're looking forward you. to Ray's favorite episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all for today's uh, shout outs. Awesome. So now I'm going to um, do um, our very own Matt Scientist's favorite segment. And he always loves how I introduce a segment. The Alita Army News. <laughs> and for the Alita Army News, actually, they're going to have the episode 194, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to be uh, releasing today, even though you guys are going to see this in the future. It was uh, around Christmas Eve. Uh, it's about what will be Christmas in Alita world in, Sal in Salem if they would celebrate Christmas. Uh, oh, yeah. It's actually a pretty interesting topic. Uh, and they're going to be talking about that. So once you listen to this, mm -hmm. if you have not listened to it, Go ahead and check them out. It's going to be an awesome episode. Well, We're going to tune in after. But by the time they listen to this episode, this, it should this, be out. It should be complete, like really out into the past. Yeah. So you might want to just go into uh, the YouTube channel and just go through the catalog mm -hmm. and, and go find that episode. It's it should be episode 194 because I was checking that for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, and, and also, just remember, if you like a lead about an angel or Gumu, Gumu, <laughs> like yeah. it I always say it wrong, Ray. Probably purposely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but if you like it, if you like the movie and you want a sequel, that's the only prerequisite for you to be part of the army. So welcome to the army. Alita Army of Sequel needs you. Yes. And that'll be all for this Alita News. Awesome. Awesome. So <clears throat> I think I always ask this question and I always know the answer. Are we ready for this? Because Man. I we, I don't think we're ever ready in any of the episodes we, that we do. Um, this is a movie that I have seen a long time ago. And I really love this movie because it touches so many buckets for me, right? <clears throat> One of the buckets our mad scientists uh, might like, I know... Geo doesn't. But the main reason why I picked this movie, what I think this movie is so great, because, I mean, you talk about the romance of this movie, right? But there's so many out there, so many out there, so many great romance films. It, to me, that's not the main reason why I picked this, because I would actually, if I would pick it for that reason, I have other movies that I can pick for. Yeah, but <clears throat> the time traveling it was. Stellar. We will get into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll get into this film. I mean, there's so much to talk about oh, here. Boy. <laughs> so much, but it what they do to time travel. That reason why I love this movie. If you don't mind me coming in there, just to go with that. Um, when I when I saw that movie, you, you showed me that movie for the first time a couple of years ago, and I when I finished, I was certain that that was a movie like no other movie I have ever watched and after two years it is a movie that like no other movie I will ever watch probably yeah and, and you know the interesting thing is I saw the movie on streaming and and I if you know me um you know that I like my digital uh content right I don't buy um content like going forward like um uh, i always get my digital content like i go to apple and buy digital content and, and you know just not to go into details uh the reason why i do that is uh, there was a point where i used to buy so much content i love films and i had a wall that was filled with dvds and it just to me i know it looked horrible so I just sold them all out and got digital. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of digital. So this is back in, in, in 2000, I want to say 2010, 2009, right? And at that time, I was very naive when it comes to digital content. And I'm thinking, okay, it's, it's available everywhere. I, I saw it in streaming. It's one of those films that no one knows about. And I figured, you know, I'll buy it later. Uh, a year passed, and um, licensing was over, and I could not find it anywhere. 
So I want to say maybe at the end of 2010 or maybe the beginning of 2011. And mm. it took all the way to today, well, yesterday, for me to find out there was actually available and I bought it right away. So lessons learned for me, if I like a movie, especially for me that I like uh, digital content, I know there's a lot of people that have reservations for digital content and they'd rather have the physical thing. And we probably have different opinions here. But my lesson learned is if I like the movie, just buy it. Because I waited how long? Like 10 yeah. years? I mean, I'm not going to say 12. the difference that we have, but yeah, we have difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I mean, I don't blame you, man. I know why that happened. More like 11 or It's 12. like the time traveling was so blatant that probably something changed in the, <laughs> in the licensing and that's why it went off. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, you'll you'll get to this. We'll get to this and you'll find out. That, that was like its own time traveling. You've been able to find it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Something happened until yesterday. And yesterday, it came back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they fixed the issue. They fixed the timeline. They fixed the movie the became available again. Yeah. <laughs> and if you guys want to look for it, actually, we didn't want to forget to give you the reference because this is a great movie. I mean, you should go and watch it. You can find it in Voodoo, right? Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I uh, placed a link on the show description so you can go and find it. So far, at the time of recording, only, <laughs> only Voodoo has the licensing. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, um, other companies, maybe Apple eventually might get the license again and start selling. The good thing is that once they get the license and you buy it, even if the licensing goes away, it's your movie. So yeah. uh, wherever you buy it, it, it's available to you. We do hope that by the time that this episode goes on air, you're able to find it still. Yes. And nothing happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and, and if you're looking for something, that, you know, sometimes when we go out to the store and buy things, we, we could either choose to buy whatever, what everybody else is buying and everybody else is consuming. But sometimes we want to consume something that is more unique, more like if you, you want the pleasures, you, you are in for a treat if you choose to purchase this movie. For sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, the only reason why is, uh, and I know this is kind of unique for us to say. Uh, because typically we go for uh, stuff that is actually streaming, making it easy for you guys so you don't have to buy anything. But this is definitely a treat. Um, I And and yes, it, it was just, I, I was sad for basically 10 years. It, it's it's amazing for me to say 10, I've been waiting 10 years. Wow, for this you guy. survived. It, it's crazy. So this <laughs> this film, it's it's um it's a Japanese film. I just want to say that out loud there because uh, I know many people, um, they have reservations with uh, um, subtitles. None at all. <laughs> so this is actually in Japanese. It, it is a subtitle film. Uh, it is very obscure to the fact that uh, you have, you guys would not never ever heard of this film if yeah. I never mentioned it to you guys. Yeah, true. Cool. I, I think that that's one of the reasons why this podcast exists, right? To mm. to to bring out treasures that you find that would otherwise be overlooked. Yeah, on the, well, that we find on the rock somewhere. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's how like not likely to be found that easy out there. So uh, before we get into the topic of the show, um, you want me to do the the plot, or you want to? You're a better reader. Okay. Uh, well, let, let's. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I, I'm. I will have to apologize first to our math scientist uh, because I know I'm not going to give him any justice in doing it. But I have. make sure to just do as worse as you can, because <laughs> since he's not here, it'll it, it'll allow me to go to sleep with pleasure. To know that is he's aching as he's <laughs> listening to it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right. Probably right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try to do, do it justice. So here's the plot. It, it is twenty. Uh, uh, it is twenty. The twenty second of November, tw uh, two thousand and seven. Jiro uh, Kitamura uh, is spending his twentieth birthday alone. As he buys a birthday present for himself in a shopping mall, he gets the attention of a cute girl, as and she surprisingly smiles at him. Afterwards, 
She successfully steals a pair of clothes, which Jiro notices, but he ignores uh, he ignores it as she's walking away in front of him, <clears throat> and he is distracted by her beauty. The mystery girl, who seems to be interested in him, follows him to the restaurant where he eats spaghetti on the advice of his grandmother, late, later revealed to be his mother who gave birth to him in at, at an old age, as he keeps on calling him uh, grandmother, for a longer and uh, peaceful life. She suddenly appears and sits with him, starting a state, stating that it's her birthday too. The two of them then exchange birthday presents. The girl, who seems unused to, uh, unused to everything, behaves very boldly and suddenly rushes with Jiro out of the restaurant without paying the bill, provoking the manager to chase the two through Tokyo. As he spends time with the girl, Jiro finds himself charmed by her, but after a few hours, the girl insists she has to leave and goes with a tearful goodbye. The story then jumps to one year later as Jiro again celebrates his birthday alone in the same restaurant. All of a sudden, the same looking girl appears in front of him. Jiro's older self from 65 years in the future had sent this girl to save him from a disastrous fate. She was actually a cyborg modeled after the girl he met a year before in 2007. While he rejoices in, his, in her present, the restaurant is suddenly attacked by a gunman, but she saves him and the other guests by throwing the gunman out of the window. Despite her cute, awkward appearance, she is incredibly strong and behaves erratically. Later, in Jiro's home, she reveals her true identity by showing him a 3D projection of a video in which an elderly, elderly uh, Jiro from the future warns him about an incoming disaster. The old Jiro told him that the shooting at the restaurant paralyzed him for life. However, a lottery ticket he bought earlier was fortunate for him. He spent all of his time and money on one thing, creating the cyborg girl to save his past self about 60 years ago. Now he has recreated the, the story of his timeline by sending her. This was not supposed to happen, but things would correct themselves by recalibrating to the right dimension. In short span of time, she becomes Jiro's protector as well as a loyal friend, and they both share some wonderful moments. She also saves many other lives from tragic death and all Jiro had regretted witnessing. Over time, Jiro not only becomes dependent on, but also falls in love with her. However, when she cannot return the feelings, he gets irritated and forbids her from seeing him unless she can do so. He begins to regret this, especially when it becomes apparent that she is still helping him while staying out of sight. Another disaster soon occurs. A gigantic earthquake completely devastates Tokyo. As his apartment blocks collapses, she appears to help him. But even her superhuman strength isn't enough to save him. After telling Jiro that she now understands his feelings, she is destroyed while saving him. Later distraught, Jiro finds her body and spent the next 61 years rebuilding, uh, trying to rebuild her. He eventually succeeds, but dies shortly after. Further in the future, 63 years later, in 2133, a girl is told by her friends that there is a cyborg on display that looks just like her. She is curious and buys the now defunct cyborg to experience the memories mm -hmm. stored in her hard drive. Intrigued, she, she then decides to fulfill her wish on going back in time to meet Jiro. She is revealed to be the actual girl who met Jiro on his 20th birthday in November 22nd, 20, 2007, who did so because she wanted to meet him before the cyborg did. After the events of the story, she becomes again, she, she comes again 
to the moment when Jiro weeps over the destroyed body of the cyborg, she then says, I can feel his heart and decides to live with Jiro from them on, changing his fate again. And again. And again. And again. And again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> And this is the reason why I, I actually love this film, is what it does for time travel. Yep. So... It flips it off big time! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am reminded of an episode of a Marvel movie where they talk about that, and, and then they're going to travel in time, and then there's this comment, like, they go like, because someone in the scene believes time travel would affect... Uh, destiny and would pretty much and he's like the person like no that's not what it happens what happened already happened we're just and it's the idea of like how like even though um, we're going to the past what's happened till this point before we go to the past it's going to remain and that's an interesting ah, that's what they call concept. fixed events in the t in points in time right yeah yeah uh I, before we get in too deep into the conversation, mm -hmm. I want to ask the first question that we normally ask in this film. Um, so the typical question is, how old were you and what was your first impression on this film? Um, I don't know if I want to, should I go first or should I go last? Uh, you could go first. And I think that we both are victims of you bringing that movie to us. <laughs> <laughs> I um I saw this film. Um I think it was a year after it released on uh Japan. Um uh, it released in Japan in 2008. Uh I want to say I don't know, I want to say maybe at the beginning of 2010. Um not necessarily the end of 2009. Um if you guys have heard this show long enough, you know why my name is okay, Amira Happy Ending. Amira Happy Ending. This movie not only touches on nope. so much of of sci-fi topics, especially the the time traveling topics that I like talking to uh, talking about so much, but there is some strong drama, and and, and it was very very at points very sentimental um, to watch, at least for me. Um, the very first time that I watched it, it was so hard to the point of being traumatizing. But not, well, not necessarily, almost getting there. Um, and interestingly enough, in retrospect, um, every time I watch this film, I it's not to that point, uh, obviously, because I watched this film so many times. Uh, but it always gets me. Mm -hmm. It always gets me on, on the topics, on the drama side of the, of, of the movie. But uh, it also gets me on the uh, mental side of things. And yeah, how he cried you, yesterday. Yes, and he, um, Captain Chaos, is a witness. Yep. Um, so, it, it the, this mental side of it, the, the the time travel side of it, is also another. Uh, I I don't think I've ever seen a film that has done this. Uh, well, you've seen films that have done it, but I don't think I've seen a film that has done it so many times in the same film. And 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 what you mean to say is blatantly. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I it was really impressive to me that I had a film that was so like you know drama comedy comedy action romantic, and and mainly I want to say sci-fi with a dash of all the other stuff because yeah. the sci-fi is right up front of mm -hmm. everything in this oh, yeah. film it's like the foundation. Exactly. And on top of that, the way that it's kind of animated <clears throat> and what happens is very anime-like. Exactly. Yeah. So if you <laughs> like anime, this film, it, it, it it's, aesthetics-wise, it's an anime. Yeah, and it's not like overly done. Like it's right, right, because I've seen some movies that have that anime aspect of it, but it's like so overly done that it's cringy. But this this is not the case for now. Exactly. I, think, I think that it has a flavor of fun to to it that more more than anything because it's like the run, the fast running. Oh yes. And then there's every time that she punches somebody, like a real person would have died. Yes. Just with the flying and the impact, 
but it was not like she barely heard them really. He just knocked them out, you know. Well, the <laughs> so most <it's> funny. <laughs> the most obvious scene is when um they got out of the club and oh, she was taking he was trying to make her jealous with another girl. This girl slaps him. Um we don't get to know what happened. Maybe he tried to kiss her and she didn't like that. Whatever that yeah, case may be. He was trying to kiss her. And of course, um, the cyborg doesn't does she's doesn't allow him to get hurt. And so she grabbed this girl and just swung it, you know, through the air. Cool. And she 15, landed 20 meter, meters away. Yes. And she landed face first into a shallow. Fountain. Fountain. Yeah. <laughs> so when you look at this, it is so anime, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's like what exactly how you would see it in an anime. The guy, the guy that was dancing with her in the club right before that, she punched him and he flew to a wall. Exactly. So <laughs> anime. But when you analyze this like live action, you know, face first into a shallow fountain. Yeah, that's you want to call the ambulance. That. Yeah, they're not getting out for that. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's the thing that Ricardo was talking about. Although you hear us say, it, it sounds like it's not going to look, granted it's not natural, but they don't overly do it. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not abused. Exactly. It, it's obviously fantasy because yeah. no one can go face first, but it, it's not out there in your face. It's, it's for comedic effect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's my first impression of this film. It, it was very um, emotional, yet it, it kept my brain going with the topics. And, and it's, it's kind of hard to say, uh, because if you start watching this, um, the very beginning of the film, and this is another thing that I like, is you think you're watching a rom-com. Rom mm -hmm. and, and of course, it, it, it's... it's it's still a rom-com, right? Uh, yeah, sci-fi with rom-com. Don't you dare say it's not. But the thing is, you, you don't think that there's anything else in this film. You think it's straight out rom-com. That's it. And then once she comes back, the girl comes back, which at first I thought it was the same girl coming back. You realize, holy the crap, they're actually even mirroring the, the Terminator. Yeah. On the way that she comes back. Mm -hmm. So she, you're like, whoa, this is this is a sci-fi film. <laughs> this is not just a rom-com. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think the way they dress the character is like inspired from an, an anime that you mentioned. Oh, yes. Gio. Evangelion. Evangelion. Actually, it's funny because at the beginning, when they exchanged gifts, she gave you like a like a little cartoon. I don't know if you guys have watched probably Chin Chan. So it looks very like chubby and nice and cute, like Chibi, Bukangaru yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I watch Bukangaru. <laughs> Sue me. Uh, <laughs> and the one that he gave her is like a mini figurine of anime from Evangelion that is actually Rei Janami, which is funny because in his house then, and she gets jealous looking at the statue too, then he has the other character for Evangelion, Asuka Langley too. <laughs> so it was just hilarious. Like she's looking at these other figurines like, who's this bitch? <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> she throws it out on the floor. But, but I, mean, I mean, first impression, I mean, this movie is funny because it's like full of all these little details. And I think that, that, us that love anime, we can relate so much because the culture is ingrained in us. Yeah. So all these little things, like if you if you don't enjoy anime and Japanese culture uh, as a whole, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that are gonna go over your head. You know, like yeah. all these little details, and that's I think one of the things that make it wholesome and fun too is like when you're watching all these things, it makes you feel like you're part of something. Yes. You yes. know, that relatability. And I mean, who is not looking for that? That's like that aha feeling that you get when you watch it, you know? Yeah. So uh, I, I guess we, we kind of like went on to, you know, like we normally do in this show. <laughs> um, so who wants to go next as to, you know, how old were you and what was your first impression on the film? Um, I'm not sure Ricardo was with us when you show it to me, but I mean, I think that we watched this movie, what, like two or three years ago? You show it to me. Yeah. Um, I, and and I can't remember the details um, if we saw it a second time with Ricardo or was just by himself. Ah, uh, probably. I, I think it was just you and I. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, it was, you guys did let me out of it. Well, you, you weren't you? here at that point, How probably. Dare you? <laughs> yeah, I think you might have shown it to Gio later on because I think it, 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 
Uh, you still d didn't live in Miami back then. No, yeah, no, I was in here already when we eh, watch it. Eh, when and you show you sh you must have showed it to me. Uh, when did you move to Miami? Um, was it 2019? Uh, yes. Or 2020? 2020. Would have been like early 2019 or 2018. Is well. so I, I was 28 years old or so, and I, I, that that it was definitely as I said, you watch the movie. And it's literally a movie. And right now we're talking about the movie. So yeah. if you want to get the real experience, by all means, pause the the the, the, yes. the the podcast, go watch it and come back and share with us and, and finish the podcast with us. So you'll be like all engaged in everything that we're going to be saying. Yes. But as I was saying, for me, it was like, it's a movie where you definitely don't know what's going to come next. Yeah. Um, as, as I said, um, for me, for, for some can be a, a, a point of laughter, but for me, it's actually like if you want to find a movie that stretches the consequences and, and the repercussions of time traveling, you won't find another movie like this one. Um, and, um, and this is why I'm, why I'm saying it. It's almost like um, the movie starts, right? And, and he meets this girl that becomes like her dream girl. And he dreams about her so much that she, he creates this cyborg because he wants this girl to, to exist. And then this cyborg that he creates in his lifetime comes back and, 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 and in his other self lifetime and protects him. But it's not until that, that lifetime is over that, that the girl meets and it's a, 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 the cyborg. And, and experiences the memory, and then she comes back, and she becomes the first experience. So it's almost like three cycles of a lot of the same lifetime, in order to, and it's like a loop. Again, I cannot even find the words to make it clear <laughs> enough. Probably your mind is twisted, and you can't. But this is how intense, and that's what that movie did for me. Um, and oh. of course, you know, I, I also. I uh, uh, enjoy happy endings like like uh, Admiral. So I'll probably be like the lieutenant happy ending. <laughs> I would probably name myself that. Um, so we we actually have spoken how we share that about uh, um, when that is in in a good sci fi movie, a, a, a nice a, a happy story. Yeah. Which uh, but but going back to 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 what the experience was for me. That was it. Like my mind was like stretched out. It's like, whoa, you know, like it's like thinking what came first, the chicken of the egg, exactly. but, but, <laughs> but on steroids. So that's what, what the best thing I have to talk, to say it. Exactly. That's in a nutshell, literally. They made the chicken of the egg out of time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you share uh, the, the first experience that we have, or, or it's it's the same, or what is your perspective on your first uh, experience in this film? It was fun for me. Uh, you still have a heart. I'm dead inside, so like <laughs> you know that it, it's not only uh, movies, but like anime too. You know that they always overcapitalize with tragic and sentimental and the sad piano. Like in Naruto, <laughs> you know, so they can actually just like grab your heart and pinch it and shit, and I, it works the opposite way for me. It's like seeing a little puppy doing puppy acts to me, and I'm like, no asshole, that doesn't work on me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so for me, it was a fun movie to watch, uh, and, and I had a good time with it. I mean, yeah. uh, besides, and I mean, it, it's a good exercise for my brain trying to make sense out of all the time traveling <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we want to see we want to see if if by geo sitting between me and and and, and bob can he become a little more fluffy <laughs> the thing is that you guys are like bread and i'm like peanut butter and jelly together oh <laughs> uh, yeah um yeah so to 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 go back to the film the the beginning of the film, as you can, if you heard from, from the plot, and I know the plot was missing a couple of things there, but um, this guy meets the, the this girl, right? And I remember it was, I was kind of like scratching my head. This guy is your typical shut-in. Yep. 
Uh, he's a college student. Um, he, I think he only has one friend. Which I was surprised he even has a friend. <laughs> exactly. I was surprised about that too. And then all of a sudden he's shopping for his birthday and this girl starts following him, smiling at him. And in a way that it shows that she is really into him. Yet this guy had never seen this girl before. And, and this is one of the chicken on the egg things. Because on that particular scene, she has a, we, she has already gone to the end of this film, right? He has already experienced him through the eyes of the cyborg, fell in love with him. And the reason why she's back in the past from 2033 is because she wanted to meet him. Uh, she's already long gone. He's already dead. And she expressed how s the sadness of the of the realization and, and the reason why she came back. Talk about weird kinks. <laughs> to me. Oh, by the way, I warn you guys that this episode is never going to end because we're going to find each other on that time loop that the movie goes to. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's a reason why I'm saying this, right? So, this caused an effect, right? The beginning of the film. He meets her. He kind of, he, he does fall in love with her for the few hours that they spend together. She never comes back. So he wants her. He fell in love with her. She, he was lucky enough to buy a lottery no, ticket. Here's the thing. He doesn't fall in love with her at the beginning. He starts falling in love with her mid-movie. No, no, no. Here's the thing. There's, there's a reason why I'm saying it this way, right? Okay. He, he misses this girl. He actually said at the beginning of the movie that this is the only person has actually expressed interest in him. Because yeah. obviously he's a shut-in. He only has, and what we said, you know, we were surprised he has one friend. Well, well, well and, and the one friend he has is sort of like a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like he has a friend that nobody else wants to have. Exactly. So if you want to put it like tragic like that. Exactly. So he, he, he. Necess might not necessarily be in love with her, mm -hmm. but he definitely misses her because there's a one person that show interest in that way to him. So what happens um, if we follow the normal procedure? He he bought a lottery ticket, which is never shown in the film. Yeah, he became I what I like to assume is a multi multi millionaire with that ticket, and. He, missing this interaction that he has for a few hours, he spent his entire life trying to recreate her. And the only way that he can, and he's dedicating all his money and his time to creating a cyborg. So, so let, let me just interject right, right there, um, Bob, I'm sorry. So, so just so you guys get, get the idea, this is becomes like the flashback uh, background story. So this is not the movie. This is like what the movie tells you happened. This is the background. Mm -hmm. So th at the beginning of the movie, you see that. This is, <clears throat> so what, what would have happened in the background story, again, not the movie, is the idea that he met this girl, right? And then he, it's part of a very tragic accident that leaves him uh, um, disabled. And, and th th he's a disabled man with a lottery ticket, multi-millionaire, -million and then uh, in his disability, he gives all of his fortune to create this girl that he met in, in, in his entire life. You can take it from there. Well, but, but here's where it gets confusing, mm -hmm. because when the old man is talking, he said that is not the normal timeline. Mm. He said he was not supposed to be hurt in that accident on the, res on the restaurant with that bullet that that crippled him. Mm -hmm. So that's why the reason why I said the original timeline, he was okay. But he just misses this girl so much that he spent all of his money, all of it, and his time to recreate it. Now, one, and I like to call it plot hole that I have, um, but you know, you had to suspend this belief. This is obviously a, a sci-fi film. Um, <clears throat> He also obviously spent time on either researching or purchasing the ability for time travel. Mm. Because 
something happened that the timeline got disrupted. And again, that's not in the film either, mm -hmm. where he is in a timeline where he got the bullet in the restaurant. And now he spent all his time, he created the cyborg, he's able to time travel. So he sent that cyborg back to himself to try to prevent the accident from happening. Mm -hmm. And in, in that conversation that you do see on the beginning of the film, he, dis, he does say, and time would write itself. Mm. So then if I'm able to protect myself from getting that bullet, then I would not be crippled anymore. This is the first. <laughs> Number one, we don't know what happened that the timeline got corrupted. Because he said it, it got corrupted and now he has to write a timeline. Mm -hmm. So putting that aside, that should have changed the past by sending yourself back into the past to, pre to, to actually prevent yourself from getting hurt on that restaurant from the gunman, that should have changed the outcome going forward. Yeah. So it, it could be a multiple of things. I mean, it could be all the way to the fact where he never get the ticket, he never becomes a millionaire, and in, in turn never creates a cyborg. So, so th that's 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 actually a very interesting um, idea right there, Bob. Is is um, how um, you would assume our, in our lineal way to think about time that <clears throat> let's say um, he is um, in a wheelchair. If he's able to send save himself from the from the uh, bullet that put him in a wheelchair. Now, all of a sudden, he should be able to stand from the wheelchair. But that's not what happens in the movie. It's almost like there's um, different timelines. Like, you know, that they call it the parallel universe. Exactly. Or, or, so, so the movie assumes that is the way uh, time traveling um, is. That when you go and you visit yourself in the past, you change the course for that past self. Yet that is not... What's gonna you're gonna if you go back to the future, that's not what you're gonna the result of that is not what you're gonna run into, but you're gonna be right where you left off. And then that self of you would just take another route in the fork and would have a different life, but that's either way not yours. And, and you have a really good point. And me and you have actually talked about this in many previous episodes. I believe this is what's going on in this film, where the old man is still hurt. You know, he's still in a wheelchair. Um, the only thing is minus a girl um, because he did send it back. Uh, but by sending it back, he actually created a branch in uh, the universe yep. and, and, a, and created a, a different reality, uh, the branch from that point. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I strongly believe this is what's happening in the film. And, and, and another interesting thought to, to, put, to, to interject right in there Saving himself from the bullet now keeps him from getting that lottery ticket. Therefore, he's no longer a millionaire to, to create that robot. So it's almost like the robot, it's the only thing, um, the, the, only, the only version of it where he's not going to be able to create her anyway. You see what I'm trying to, to, yeah. come, to, what we're trying to um, bring, bring up? And, and you do have a point because if we watch the film, he never buys a ticket. Mm -hmm. He never, throughout the entire film, he never becomes a millionaire. Mm -hmm. It's true. So it's almost like though, though he's now living this life, it, he he could have not been able to live this life without the other self that that became disabled and 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 came up with with the recreated the the, the cyborg. Exactly. Now, the other thing that we're going to add to the mix is the fact that the old man, uh, actually watching the news, there were some moments in, in that person's history where he saw some events happen in Tokyo that made him really sad and communicated this to the robot, the cyborg girl. She hates that term, robot. <laughs> oh. This is a cyborg. She has... Um, 
um, cyber, for all of you who are not familiar, you have bio, bio components. Uh, the only difference is bio components are created. She's not a robot, but she still needs to charge. So, so, <laughs> so, so technically, a cyborg is uh, an artificial human being. That's the, the thought. Like, it has a heart. Uh, it has a version of a stomach. It has a version of, of, of organs the way a human. That's what a cyborg is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would would make sure, you know, it, it's a combination of... Uh, uh, with some organic ten, components actually organic components mm-hmm. and well it, it could they I, in my opinion the organic components could be made artificial mm-hmm. organic Art- components Art- just to correct or, or it could be real artificial you know re- real organic components well, it could be a mixture of all of that mm-hmm. to me that's what a cyborg is I, I, another version of, of, of in sci-fi what it's understood as a um, cyborg would be a human being that um, that has been mechanically enhanced or reconstructed. Let's say they lost an arm and they have a mechanical arm. They lost an eye. They have a, a, an artificial eye, but it's still a human being, but it has artificial, therefore it's a cyborg. That's in other versions of sci-fi, you would, uh, uh, movies or shows, you would see that as a cyborg too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this, th- there's, at least at the beginning, there's two separate um, timelines, uh, and they're definitely intertwined because of the action. Now, it's it's and this is another conversation that we we're having. It's like the whole thing started because this girl was curious. So you had a really good point when you uh, Gio, when you, we were talking about the, the film. Whenever you noticed this for the very first time, and we are talk- we actually talked about this in our episode Arrival. And it's how we, as a third-dimensional being, are linear. So we don't know what things we can and cannot change in our timeline to make our future better down the line. Because we don't have that foresight. If we are a higher-dimensional being, and and I always say I start at fourth-dimensional being or higher, you are actually... In, in what science knows today, and you can Google this, is space-time. So our normal brain cannot comprehend that space and time are is one single thing. We, we, we tend to think space, and when I talk about space, it's like, you know, going from the kitchen to the living room, right? Space. And then time is like, I was in my living room, and then five minutes later, I was in the kitchen. Mm. That's time, the passage of time. So we go from birth to death in a single line. Mm-hmm. For a fourth dimensional being, there is because t- space time is one thing, there's circular timeline. So they experience their birth and their death at the same time. And they live within this circle, within mm. this loop, right? So in essence, you could say. They live forever and yet not, if that makes sense. And from our standpoint, being so uh, clinging to to the ever-changing nature of the future, which is something very uncertain, mm-hmm. when we look at how these beings assimilate and accept the inevitability, in- inevitability of things, mm-hmm. even my makes us feel despair. Like, don't go further. Let's make a comparison on arrival. Yeah. When one of the hectopods gets killed mm-hmm. and they were like, yeah, this was going to happen. This is, it, it is what has to happen for things to progress the mm-hmm. way that they should progress. Exactly. You know, but for them, it's like, no, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the crazy conundrum mm-hmm. of being able to experience past, present and future all at once. Exactly. And, 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 you know, that's, I think, what is lacking for us third dimensional beings for us to be able to have a successful time travel. Mm-hmm. Because, and let me let me explain this scenario. This is a scenario that I have, was, I have always explained. Um, let's say, for example, you wake up in the morning, you're late for work, and you got a choice to make. Uh, you can get a coffee at the office, or you can detour to Starbucks, get a coffee, and then go to work and end up being late, right? So obviously, that's very simplistic. There's so many different possibilities. Uh, but I'm just for making this uh, point simple. There's this fork only has two choices. You can go they go left or right, right? Um, 
as a third, a fourth dimensional being, you know the outcomes mm. of each, if, or each of your choices. Mm -hmm. And you know that, the, let's say, for example, that you are, you're a fourth dimensional being and you know that you're going to go straight to work, but at the time that you leave, there's going to be a, tra a, a, a traffic jam. And if you go to Starbucks, by the time you get the coffee, the traffic jam is gone. So you might have might have get there earlier and been to work on time. But as a third dimensional being, you can't see the foresight. Mm -hmm. So you have to pick whatever you think it is without knowing the consequences in your future. And I know this is a very simplistic way of putting this in, but this is what I'm telling you because if you are linear, a fourth dimensional higher being, you know what you could change and what is useless to change. Mm -hmm. and, and that would explain the reason why the head tapas in the movie Arrival never did anything to prevent the second hectopod from mm -hmm. dying. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the but other one, since they lived in a circular a timeline, knows that it was necessary for him for, for, the, the, for the necessary future, future that needed to happen. It, it, they wanted to prevent war. Like for example, in, in Arrival, they wanted to prevent war. Mm -hmm. It was necessary that all this happens yes. for that outcome. And, and speaking of, of that movie, it, it, you could almost see, what I remember, <clears throat> once she meets again, the other one that survived, it's almost like his reaction, it's not, he was not or, uh, sad or, 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 you know, it's almost like there was a, an acceptance to, to the death of the other one. Well, yes. Almost it, as if it was meant to be, so to speak. There's, an, uh, there's another analogy that I, mm -hmm. that I talked in other episodes where I said, like, uh, let's say, for example, you're a businessman and you're married and you're, you're leaving for a business trip that is going to take a week, right? And you're saying goodbye to your wife. You don't experience sorrow. You don't experience the, the, the actual feeling of missing your wife because in your head you're leaving, but you're already coming back. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're going to a Starbucks, for example, and you're going to try a new coffee flavor. Before you even get into the parking lot, you already know what that's going to taste like. I, 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 want to, um, I, I want to try to, you know, just the idea of time and space, I, I think it's very fascinating. And I want to try to explain a way in which I, exer I, I, I did like some sort of exercise in my head that kind of helped me understand. Um, and, and it's just like a, a, a picture, a mental picture about it. Let, just say uh, you have this super powerful telescope, right? And, and you choose to tonight to grab a telescope and, and, and just watch the farthest millions of light speed years away how do you how do you say light, light speed? years light. millions millions of light years and you're already looking in your powerful uh, telescope millions of light years away but the reason why we call it millions of light years away is because and let, let me not get ahead of myself you all of a sudden see a, a, a planet that exploded right in your telescope you're like wow but that is uh, something that you're seeing millions of light years away. What that means is that what you're seeing, it's it's the light that reached you of what happened millions of years ago. Yeah, that star might not be there. So, so it's almost like what truly, though you see the explosion happen in your powerful telescope, it's that there's nothing there anymore. Yeah. But but and and that is kind of like that is the the the, the, the um, I guess the edge the the mind bendingness of of understanding time and space that 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 um uh, Bob wanted to 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 bring bring up right yeah that that is a one way of putting the concept on mm -hmm. so going back to to the film um and what you said. Uh, and the, this is the reason why I said all this, uh, is that they, they're just changing time, the timeline mm -hmm. and, and without, you know, considering the, 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 the consequences. And, and you do have a point when you said that multiple times through this film, but 
we also have to understand we are third dimensional beings. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to get that concept of consequences. Mm -hmm. We can only see what's immediately in front of us and mm -hmm. we can only perceive what is bad and what is good. And we, as with a human nature that we have, uh, have the tendency of changing the bad things, regardless of what that bad thing might be in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and going back to another conversation that I had is we are the results of our experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I said it correctly. Experiences, I'm not saying good experiences. I'm not saying bad experiences. I'm saying experiences. So the collection of all your good, bad, or neutral experiences is what makes you who you are today. All right. So this film it, it is just grabbing, going and grabbing back to the human nature of seeing, okay, something happened that is bad. Let's change that. For example, this film, the guy got hurt at the restaurant. And because of that, he became a millionaire. And because of that, he created the cyborg. By changing that, he doesn't get the lottery. And because he doesn't have the money for the lottery, he doesn't create the cyborg. So one bad experience, which is getting hurt at the restaurant, was responsible for all the good things that happened to this guy. True. True. Yep. yep. And, and, and notice how he is, um, he sends the, the cyborg to save himself, but he doesn't send the cyborg to save his mother, for example, from that terrible earthquake that mm -hmm. happened. There's almost like, a certain understanding like kind of like we can't really mess with this too much that that, that. Um, and this is what what um surprises me about it's almost like we're thinking if we want to think linear about it <clears throat> he had this accident he became uh disabled now um he creates the the robot he sends back uh a <clears throat> the robot um and then the robot keeps Everything bad that happened that he regretted, the robot, um, the robot um, keeps it from happening. Exactly. But, but well, then, then there is the, the the major earthquake, which at that point he recreates the robot again um, later in his life, towards the end of the movie. <clears throat> but um, a, what, what I'm trying to say, it's almost like then. That robot that he creates after the accident is the one that meets the actual girl 70 years in, into the future. And now the girl falls in love with the memories of this robot, knowing that a man could love an idea of her to that to, to, so much. Mm -hmm. She's like, wow, that's not even a real person. That's not, if that person was able to love this representation of me, so much how much more would he not love me this is my the love of my life that that it's not even in my lifetime let's say she wants to say and then she goes back into the future and she becomes the catalytic of all this chain of events that that almost like three cycles of 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 um of of correction happen back and then it's like back at the beginning and the robot comes with that little toy that geo mentioned at the beginning and and it's almost like she received the robe the, the, the toy right she received the toy <clears throat> that the robot came with and, and and it's almost like she got it you know yeah. for the first time in a hundred years in the future and then that little toy is what she gives to the boy, to, to, to the young man, and that is the beginning. And it's almost like the toy goes around three loops of, of, of tra traveling in time. It, it, I don't know. My, uh, yes. Did I lose you? I, I lost myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. In, and I they know, find each love. other. I guess, I guess that, you know, that's the power of love. You it's, know? A, it's like, it's uh, like the grandfather paradox. And then you pull a Uno reverse car on it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I was going to say that. that. That is the biggest paradox there is because, you know, she is in the past because of the robot, you know, in the future. So 
and the robot in the in the nearer future it's in the present because of her being in the past. I'm sorry. It was already audience, going. audience. I interrupted you. Audience, bear with <laughs> us while we're trying to fix our thoughts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, but but I think that that also the funny thing about it, just to make you did a very good observation yesterday too, is the first memories that she created with Jiro are not the robots because mm -hmm. she came before she met the robot. Exactly. Which is, and she came before she met the robot because she saw the robot's memories and wanted to be first than the robot. Yeah, this is definitely a, a grandfather part of the story. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> like the, 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 the fucker in the future is the one that actually makes everything happen, actually. So if she never traveled it. in the past... She, the, the, this would never happen. I don't know how, they, how the heck she got to the robot. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. I mean, this th there's multiple uh, time, uh, not timelines. There are most multiple uh, um, universes here, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a universe where she came back, and there's a universe where she never interacted with him. Obviously, that's not part of the film. I got it. I got it. So it's like if anybody asks you what was first, the egg or the chicken, <laughs> it was the cat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was looking for the little the little crickets. <laughs> anyway, uh, but but you know, and and um, there's a, a, an interesting scene <clears throat> in the movie that uh, relates to um, you know, when when the when the girl visits for the first time before the cyborg ever came into scene, that encounter, it's almost like uh, you can tell how overwhelmed she is with the whole thing. You know, she's meeting a man from whom she would receive a kind of love that she had never seen. She's also visiting a city that doesn't exist in her time. You know, one of the things shows her eating apples, Probably apples that they no longer have in the future. Exactly. You know, and she's devouring that thing like without manners. Uh, uh, um, and 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 he is also like she is like bro. She's eating more than the three of us could eat in hunger. <laughs> she is like a kid on sugar, like uh, uh, with a sugar rush. Oh, like uh, uh, how do you say overstimulated? Yes. You know, and in that overstimulation, they come to come to a point where she now. Uh, kind of like begins to argue with him for some things that he did. And she that he hasn't done yet. That he hasn't done yet, true. And, uh, and, and oh, I mean, yes. I mean, Do you want to say something to that, Bob, that before I, I, I go on? Yes, because that's I like, remember... That's like your girlfriend getting pissed off at you because she dreamed that you cheated on him. I, <laughs> <laughs> right? I was... The very first time that I saw this film, I was like... I was scratching my head because she's saying all this stunt, all these things. Um, you know, after I realized this, this is what's going on. She said, uh, "You, I'm sorry." She said, "You call me jealous. You said that I punch too hard and that I'm rough, exactly, you know, and, among other things." And is this the first time that this guy's m met this girl? Right. Well, well, she talks about the guy as he said, so she doesn't let him know that it's him. Here's in the future, our cycle. Get ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> keep, keep it up. Keep it up, Bob. <laughs> so, so, yeah, this is what happened in the future. This is what happened after the, the, um, the nightclub scene when uh, he got upset, he got drunk, he said things that he never meant to say. Uh, and, and these are the things that this girl remembers and is actually saying it back to you at the very, very beginning. So talk about things out of context, right? Imagine if the actual uh, she cyber would have really punched him at the beginning, would have broke a couple of ribs on him. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Little did he know <laughs> she doesn't punch that hard. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, and and um, it, it's like uh, it, it almost um harkens to the the thought of something that we as human beings always try to do as much as possible. Uh, it's the the idea of making amends. You no, know? she she was kind of like giving him a chance to undo the hurt that he caused in the future. She wanted to 
for him to remember, you know, she, 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 she was kind of asking him, you know, he told her that he, in the future that she walked ugly. She, she, re, she wanted to hear from, from her, a a a, 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 um, a correction of that. Like, oh, oh, and then no, he says, no, you work like a model. Right. <clears throat> and, and it's, it's very interesting the way the movie, um, the movie plays out that scene because, he um is it's well he's partially drunk but he's he's mm -hmm. very he's very conscious but it's almost like it didn't keep him from saying those hurtful things and and his um and 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 his comment about it it's it's also very um how do you say uh interesting when he wakes up in the morning because he says i use the same words she said to me last year i couldn't understand why I said such things to her. So it's almost like even by knowing he couldn't, it, it didn't keep him from, from saying these things. Yes. I don't know if yeah, that, it's that like, has... It's like, it's like me telling you listeners, like, go to YouTube and sign up for the ring bell and subscribe. <laughs> go and subscribe. You'll do it tomorrow. You won't know why. But you'll be doing it. And that's like me doing some kind of programming in your head. <laughs> and, 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 and again, th that's the idea of, of what came first, the chicken of the egg, because the cat. because <clears throat> technically, <laughs> technically she said these things because she heard them from him. Right. But yet he said them in the future, but it, it didn't keep him from saying them almost like the, they originated with him. These words that sh that he heard. Didn't came from her, came from him. Therefore, he come. It was natural nah, for him to say. It came say from it. her. It's, it's like you discussing, you having a fight with your girlfriend, precisely that she did to you, but you end up apologizing for it. That's what she did with him because she was the very mm -hmm. first one that actually said these words to him. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it was. It was like a. It was like a subconscious. Uh, mind control kind of thing. Like when you're doing something and trying to like write on somebody's subconscious something. Well, let me let me explain. That is actually called uh, a bootstrap paradox. There you go. <laughs> okay, so this occurs when an object or information is sent back in time, and its existence is a closed loop with no clear origin. For example, right, if someone travels back in time and gives Shakespeare a copy of his own work, who originally wrote these words? If it was if he was inspired by his own work. That's basically what's happening here. She's, at the beginning of the movie, says this, this words to him, and the same words that he then says later on in the film, in the future, to the robot. Mm -hmm. the Not even to her. Well, it, it, well, and eventually she gets it because she experiences the robot's memories. That's the, I think that's the most <clears throat> intricate part of the relationship between the real her and the robot is that she comes from a short time in the beginning, had experienced the whole life of the robot. Yes. So it's like she really she really was not there, but she lived it that's indirectly. Another, that's another question that I have, because, I mean, you could see when she comes back, and this is something that threw me off at the beginning of the film, the way that she's looking at him is the way someone looks at someone that has ex spent an, 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 in <laughs> an entire life with a person. And this is the beginning of the film, number one. Number two is, it's obvious, this guy doesn't even know who this girl is. Yeah. So. It's that feeling that I get when I go to Google to look for Alzheimer's symptoms and I see all the links are purple already. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so yeah this this film we, we were talking about the grandparents which by the way uh if you're not familiar with what the grandfather paradox is uh this is a concept and, and i like to think that you have heard by now but if you haven't we hope uh this is a concept that talks about if you go back in time and kill your granddad would you be born yeah and that's what the, the, this... oh, would you oh, would you like Marty but fly yourself out of the place and just vanished? Well, <laughs> if, if your dad was born already, it, it was a funny thing. Like in Back to the Future, it, they play it that way. Just from from my recollection, but what was this the the the, the event that that you said uh, it had a name? The straps? What? Oh well, uh, to correct you on the first thing, mm -hmm. uh, grandfather paradox is where you go and kill your grandfather as a kid. 
Uh, okay. And then uh, second question is bootstrap paradox. Mm -hmm. That is when you give, for example, an artist a copy of its own work mm -hmm. um, in the past. So then who was the inspiration? Because mm -hmm. it was his work. He's just hadn't invented it yet. It's like putting a cat and then putting a toast on the other side and let it loose. And the cat never lands on the back. It never lands on the back. And the toast always lands on the butter. So it'll just <laughs> create infinite energy in the air and never fall. <laughs> right? Uh, kind of. <laughs> but, I, but I think that in simple words too, what really is happening here, like I was using the example, for example, that they do in Back to the Future, where when something doesn't happen, then the grandfather paradox that they play, for example, Marty is disappearing. Mm -hmm. there, and the photo, like the, the siblings are disappearing, right? But in here, what's happening is that every time that something changes, it doesn't change that timeline. It just branches out to another reality mm -hmm. automatically. That's, yeah. So, so just like you mentioned, maybe that version of Jiro in the future that was uh, crippled because of the accident still did exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But another one was created where he was not crippled and he actually was able to age till old age and he made his own little harem of... Uh, she she works, <laughs> but, but then there is the connection between the, the each each um, reality because it's almost like one could not exist without the other. You of know? course, of course, that's that's <clears throat> the importance of the branching out. Mm -hmm. It's like they they don't originate alone from different places. Mm -hmm. That's why they branch out. Uh, you you want I'll me to you. bake your needle your noodle? Oh, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, if you can at you, this point, you, you want me to bake your noodle? Uh, uh, yeah. I feel I feel like we're 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 starting the show again. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told you guys, uh, and, the, and and we haven't gone yet, like, we haven't even gone to the shadows. I think yet we're gonna branch <laughs> into into another reality. You're gonna start all over again. Let, let, but, but this is again this is this is the 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 the, the fascination of, of this film. You know, again, it starts by him receiving this toy from this girl from the future, and that toy made it into his lifetime where he became a, a disabled, and then. That he sent it back with 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 another with the robot that lived another lifetime, and that other lifetime met this girl in future, and then she came back from that future and gave it back to him. It's almost like it's a loop. Uh, it, it's the, the the bootstrap whatever paradox. <laughs> can, can I can I bake you noodle now? Okay, I want to bake your noodle. What's that uh, mean? What's my name? I forgot. It. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna make you noodle right now. There is an alternative universe in this film where the girl never went back to the past. After a second time, let, let me correct myself. Mm -hmm. She went once, she never went back. She misses the guy so much, just like Jiro misses her. And she creates a cyborg or him. Okay, that's part two. <laughs> That's cyborg he, because that's exactly what happened. And then she's the human, so she dies. So she cre he creates the cyborg she too, <laughs> and then the two cyborgs live forever, ever happy after, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you know it's obvious. This is actually you know there's another thing here that we can talk about: uh, determinism versus free will. Okay, mm. time travel can change the concept of free will if the past can be changed. Does that mean the future is predetermined? Or does altering the past create new timelines and possibilities? I think that the, alter, the altering always going to create a ripple effect. I think that even our present choices have that effect on the future. And this is an argument that I have because I have had conversations with people that feel that, you know, time travel is, is not about alternate universes okay there's actually rules within the uh, universe you know creates rules on time travel that cannot be you know changed kind of like the space the the the, the time uh the 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 space limit mm -hmm. on 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 the speed on the universe right kind of like similar to that i am of the of, of the school that believes that um it just creates alternate universes. Mm. And, 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 you know, it, it's, it's actually talked, it's, it's researched, where you, you actually, you can find scientific articles 
it, obviously, this is theoretical physics, mm. right? So it's, it's, it's still in research where it talks about alternate, how alternate universes are a thing. They actually exist. Yeah. I think that we actually discussed this on our last episode where you asked me about it. And, I, and we were discussing with Ray too about what happens when you live a reality. And I, if I'm not mistaken wrongly, which happens here uh, is, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> <laughs> she comes back. <laughs> but when she comes back, mm-hmm. she is going to stay missing in that future where she came from. Exactly. That poor millionaire that actually paid, I don't know how many gazillions to buy that dead robot. <laughs> He stays without a wife. <laughs> well, you know, you have a point there, but if you if you remember to the be- the end of this film, it was a little creepy. Yeah, he had how many six? Uh, he had four mates, and then the the robot. So hair. yeah, he sends that main robot back, but he still has four more. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. He he won. He, but, but it's funny because she is the, she was the only one that seemed to be. With personality of all the other, the ones that were dressed like maid, they they had a lifeless face. But the reason why is because she is the one that went through the entire experience through the entire film, and she has all those past experiences. So that actually goes back to what I was just saying that we are the results of our experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other four, they're we're blank canvases. They're fairly new, right? Yeah, well, no, don't, we can even compare it to the Gene AI. When, when no, uh, Chobits, when he goes to the genius kid and he has all these, uh, uh, what is it called, Persicom, oh, uh, yes, maids, but this specific one was the one that raised him, and she actually even behaved differently because there were all this information. In a way, they're even kind of like humans if you think about it, because all their past experiences is what makes them, yes, what they presently are. The more experiences that even these, uh, uh, cybernetic form of life with organics yeah have the more human they start looking like even it, it is interesting that you you post that question i really never really thought about that but yeah the, the concept in general it, it's it's basically the same and uh, the experiences will change mm-hmm. that robots uh, again we're talking sci-fi we're talking the future we're talking ai right yeah. but even ai today <clears throat> chat yeah, gpt Chat GPT today is not the same Chat GPT you used last year. No, not at all. Not at all. So even something as simplistic as what I like to call a dumb AI That's uses that same concept. Basis. So the experiences actually forge and change that one thing. Yeah. Well, well and, and then it comes to the fact that, <clears throat> you know, uh, you have your experiences from the past, t- from two years ago, and they shape you in a way of what you experience. But but then remembering them ten years from now would affect you in a different way. Um, ten years from now, and then it would cause you to react in a certain way based on your memory of it ten years from now that it did not cause you to react that way when it was two years old. And your mood. The mood that mm-hmm. you had at the time that you recall those events affect will your affect your perception of that same event, mm-hmm. yeah. which in turn, you alt- it's kind of like quantum mechanics. Mm-hmm. When you open it, you affect it. So it's it, it, in, in a, um, so at, at best, what we see in this movie represented in a very physical realm, we can, we can probably in a narrative way think of our lives in, in the same way you know we might have um we might have uh think about something that happened last week and it was a, a bit of a tragedy but then um 10 years from now that maybe brought about you meeting someone that b- then became the love of your life therefore it was no longer a tragedy because if that thing would have never happened you would have never met this person and, and and this is type of and then your your memory about that tragedy after you met the person completely changed your perspective and your reaction towards similar things. So there it is. Even the past can change your future by remembering. Yeah. 
How about that? It's 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 so fast. That's a nice way to plug and give the other cheek. I don't give it. <laughs> it's like me looking in the future and saying like, oh, I was such an idiot. I should have done that to them. Or probably me saying, yeah, they should have explosive diarrhea. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, just just to 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 give give a shout out to to what this show is, and that's the the the, the um, what's fascinating about sci-fi, and maybe I I. I particularly also enjoy a lot what fantasy is, is the fact that it's not, um, it's it, it can be more real than reality in the sense of it conveys truth that it's might be, uh, go beyond what, what facts are, you know, um, and I'm trying to be uh, probably more clear of what well, I'm not trying Not only to. that, if you think mm -hmm. about it, how many things are, Hard science today that were sci stuff sci-fi back 50, 60 years ago. True. Who would have told you in 1930 we were going to go in a rocket to the moon? Yep. You know, and they would tell you, you're freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. Go to 1920s and go with an iPhone. It's a magical tablet. Well, you know, and like, this is witchcraft. You would have been burning a stake 100 years for this shit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Well, well even, even something as simple as FaceTiming. When I was, when I was in the 90s growing up, I saw that in the in cartoons like the Jetsons, and and just wouldn't think of that being possible. And by the time I was fifteen, I saw people doing it, it, it and yep. it, it's impressive, you know. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I I guess that's what I was trying trying to say. Like, um, uh, it 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 definitely it definitely uh, explains things in 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 a it, like like the way a metaphor or a parable does, you know. That that it's it, it it transcends time or it transcends a, a, an event, you know, and that's kind of like what what sci-fi can do, you know. Well, I always thought, uh, and and you know, again, I said this uh, multiple shows before. Um, I, I like to think of uh, science fiction as a thought experiment, mm -hmm. um, and a thought experiment. It's the main thing, in my opinion, about science. Mm -hmm. um, without imagination, without that concept of um thought and experimenting with your thoughts uh, you you couldn't possibly set up an ex, uh, a scientific experiment and therefore get scientific discoveries um not only that but uh the collection you know you you're inspired other scientists to do the same uh experiment and and and, and that's how science moves forward mm. um the uh, science fiction allows us to play around with concepts that are not existent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 not only look at the social or, or economic or, or, or technological uh, possibilities or, or also damages um, it, 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 it lets you explore so many things so many concepts where it, it actually in my opinion does help science yeah. and and I think, it is the main reason why we have um, what I like to say, um, art, uh, um, science imitating art. Yeah. It's because the thought experiment was already done, and, uh, and and people have really thought about it. And and the only thing missing about looking at the possibilities is is go ahead and start in the scientific, you know, process, mm. and eventually create that 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 one thing that was just a years ago, science fiction, and now science fact. Yeah. And, and, and I, I love it. I mean, I talked about this so many times. Gataka has a very uh, palpable uh, influence on humanity where because of that movie, laws were created. Um, and now we actually have genetically <laughs> modified people, don't we? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that remains to be seen. But yeah, I, that's if you don't follow our this is sci-fi, and you probably don't know what we're talking about. But there was an article that I posted um, on this is sci-fi hashtag. Um, but yeah, that, that going back to what I was saying is, it, it's a thought experiment, mm -hmm. you know. And and I invite everyone that loves sci-fi to do this. And, and and I think in essence, this is why this show exists. And because we take that thought experiment uh, to the next level and, and, and I take it to where I would love 
for all our listeners and the entire audience would take it to, to have those conversations. You know, you watch the film, you pause it, just just chew in that concept, do your own thought experiments, mm. decide if you, uh, again, there's a level of disbelief. Mm. You know, there's, remember, this is science, science fiction concepts that are not existent. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of reasons why they don't exist today. But do your own uh, thought experiments. Uh, and, and, and think and, things with a grain of salt, too. Like, like if you go into it with incredulity, uh, you're not going to have a good time. But if you go with mere curiosity uh, and a humble mind and just take things for what they are and understand what sci-fi is sci-fi and what's hard science is hard science. Yes. Being able to make that difference allows you to actually enjoy what sci-fi and the, the real possibilities that it could represent. Because that's, that's the thing. Because something is sci-fi doesn't mean that it's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Exactly. That's, that's like the biggest, biggest observation of science. Is nothing is impossible. How we get it. I mean, it's a difference. One of the the the, the, the last uh, this is sci fi post that I did about that that uh, organization mm-hmm. that started now war research probably. about war, war tra- uh, you know war travel right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is really exciting because this is a perfect example. So if you if you follow Star Trek or, or if you don't follow Star Trek, you probably know about warp engines mm-hmm. and warp travel. Um, this was a concept that started since, you know, the, the inception on Star Trek, the original series yeah. back in the 60s. Mm. So because of that concept, right, we have an issue, right? We can't travel because of the speed limit of the galaxy, which is the light speed. And we need to go faster than light speed to I be mean, able to so travel. It's so boring that they put a limit on traveling <laughs> in space, man. So, Ray already is talking about cops in space, stopping you on the speed of light. Like, what the hell, man? It's space. It's nobody's land. Uh, and for all of you who don't understand, is the closer you are to the speed of light, the closer you are to infinite mass. And we can only imagine. Uh, you can't possibly physically get into infinite mass. But if you get a pizza and you just put in the speed of light, you're never going to run out of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason what, what I mentioned about the, the speed limit. It's not technically a speed limit. It's just... You physically mass. it's yeah it's infinite mass is just you know impossible. not possible for our our physical <laughs> forms probably yeah so uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and i i completely lost my train of thought in the rail <laughs> train in the water <laughs> no uh, uh, and speaking of water just just um i was just uh, looking o- over the phone the way we talk about warp space and travel uh, uh, and, and all that um it's the way that people will talk about submarines in the 17th century. You know, there, there, there was a few attempts. There was a few, but there was, it wasn't real, really uh, successfully done until the 20th century. Yeah. Until the 20th. Yeah. But, but yet we have, we have even uh, works like the, uh, the, that novel called, uh, called uh, 20,000 Leagues of Under the Sea. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah, a masterpiece. So, I don't know if it could be covered much in a show because that was technically sci-fi for the time that it was launched. The way that that uh-huh. and and I think it was inspired. It inspired what submarine travel became in the 20th century. So oh, yeah. we're talking about warp technology and all that. And it, 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 we are we are. It's almost like we are in the 18th and 19th century talking about submarine uh, travel. For, for the 20th century. Let's say what's happened in the 22nd. Go ahead. I, and I, I thank you for that because mm-hmm. you remind me of where I was going with this. That's exactly what, where I was going with. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, in, in the 60s, you know, when this concept first appeared, um, I'm sure it was a thought experiment, you know, otherwise it would not come out. Mm-hmm. Someone has to thought about it. And, and, but it's still a, a physically impossibility. And, and then fast forward in time, to um, a doctor, a Mexican doctor called uh, Michael Acubieri, um, that actually figure out a formula on how to make warp travel, uh, you know, work, and 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 he figure it out right. And and thinking in retrospect, it's it's an impossibility, right? Because the his math says that you could do it with the energy of the universe. Now, 
that sounds impossible, but in science, it's not possible. It's not impossible. It's just improbable because mm. you imagine the energy of the entire Harness Milky it. Way. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So then we fast forward, right? And this is the importance of, of thought experiment and experimentation and theoretic, theoretical physics is that we have a group of people and, and I can't remember, and I always forget, I don't know the, I can't remember the university, I can't remember the names, I apologize. But uh, they figure out by doing their own research and, 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 and doing the math that now is not the energy of the new universe that is needed, is the energy of Jupiter. Now, hmm. it's still improbable, mm -hmm. right? Because Jupiter is big. But just hear me out for a minute. Consider the difference between the energy of Jupiter and the energy of the universe. What's more possible? <laughs> and, and here's the thing. The, the way that I can even further simplify that is the resource needed to make this equation possible is the X factor. Mm -hmm. And basically, this group of scientists that have been able to converge that necessity from the amount of the energy in the universe to Jupiter have been able to simplify this equation to a more closer place of a possibility. Exactly. And, and, and it's still not resolved. So it's still an X in the equation, but it, get, it, it, it has gotten us way closer to that answer that we're seeking, mm. where it's, we're going to be able to actually make it possible. Here's the interesting part of it. As we fast forward on the research to the last thing that I heard, right? Some other um, doctor, and I think it's in combination with NASA, if I'm not mistaken, they figure out that we could make it happen with matter and antimatter. Now, that is mind-boggling to me because if we go back to the original thought experiment from the 60s on Star Trek, that's exactly how they make warp drive works, which is matter and antimatter. Mm -hmm. If not, we're going to have another it, Bermuda Triangle. But you see, <laughs> but you see how, how crazy this is? Yeah, this is it. going back in circles. Science imitating the, art, exactly. Ah. <laughs> so, and basically, just so you guys know what it works, it, it, it's you need uh, a ring that produces uh, basically your folding space. Your folding space in a way that moves you, so you're technically not even moving. And that also explains another concept on Star Trek where people don't use seatbelts because you're not moving, mm -hmm. right? So basically, you need matter behind to, to stretch out in full space behind, kind of like in a wave. When, when you're riding a wave on a surf, surfboard, you need a bigger wave behind you and you need another, a deep on the water. So it actually, the wave is actually moving you. So you need antimatter in front to fold it down mm. and matter behind to fold it up so you can kind of glide in, in, in the cosmic wave, basically. So, so, so the, the, nice. that, that, that reaction ever in front of you is what's pushing you forward while you remain static. That's the warp, the, the thought behind the, the, the warp. warping of space. Mm -hmm. So, and, and now you understand why you have things like the Hydron Collider doing the, in, the investigations. Uh, once we discovered this, on, on all these, and there's multiples all over the world. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, the experiment with, with the what they call the God particle. Um, once we understand that and we can replicate that, we have warp drive. Uh, and, and that's the one thing that is... So now, in retrospect, we're going from the, imp the improbability of using the universe energy to now discovering antimatter. Mm. That is a big leap. Oh, yeah. And, and, and again, going back to the concept, this is why I love sci-fi, because this is a thought experiment. Someone thought about a warp drive. Someone investigated. Someone researched it. Someone did the experimentation. Granted, it is all theoretically, um, you know, with mathematical equations. Um, and, and, and now we're at the point where we are at. And, and why I got so excited when this organization was created that is dedicated to the education and the research of warp technology. And again, mm -hmm. if you follow the This Is Sci-Fi hashtag, you would have the article in front of yes. you. Yes. So you want to go follow that. So 
movies like this, you know, grant, granted, is time travel. Uh, you have uh, different scientists mentioning this, you know, from Einstein uh, to, um, I forget his name. Oh, my God. Um, wheelchair. Ah, Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody has mentioned, uh, you know, time travel. So this is another thought experiment uh, from many different thought experiments. But what I like about this film and, and what kind of thought experiment is this is, is basically exploring the fact of what happens with multiple changes on the timeline within the same story. Mm, I'm horrible, guys. He said, Sharon, and my, I automatically just want to have his mom. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. And, and, and for me and for me it's also like the the putting together how the same story plays out through three different timelines. But it's mm-hmm. all one story. It's it's so one story. And, and and that is I don't know if if I've been able to to make this uh probably clear enough in a way that that it can be discerned, digested and whatnot. But that is that is like pushing the limits of what time travel it, it, it's like this movie really ex- explores it to the limit yeah yeah i agree i agree i would just change the word explore to stretch okay <laughs> <That's great. laughs> <I don't mind>. <laughs> <laughs> okay so I, I think and correct me if i'm wrong but i think we're at the point in this show where we ask our last question yeah. Um, and that question is, uh, considering the multiple times that you have rewatched, if in fact you have rewatched this film, accounting for all the times that you rewatched from the beginning to 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 the last time that we watched, which was yesterday, um, what is your last thought of this film? And in in that question, I like to hear if your thoughts has changed. From you know, from the first time that you watched it, which is the first question we ask at your first experience, to the last time that you watched it, because um, it it is very known, um, and we have spoken about this in, in different episodes, that our opinions, our thoughts, actually change. Mm. So um, I don't know who would like to go first, but basically, what is your uh, your last thoughts on this film? Our special guest can go first. Um, Okay. Um, it, I was listening with, with with Giancarlo on my way here a song called "Love in the End," and um, and, and it, the the movie is is a romantic movie and whatnot. So it's and we talk about a lot about science and everything. But I really want to share the fact that you know um, what's special about the movie is to the degree that someone is willing to go in order to care for somebody, and and that's not just. Um, that's not just uh, translated into a romantic relationship, but also father, son, uh, brothers, uh, uh, uncle, uncle, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 that's you know it's kind of like that transcends dimensions, and that it really does, it really does, because uh, love was truly able to 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 connect to people through three loops. Of, of of time so it's almost like you know a few things I, I don't think anything other than love would have pushed somebody to do so much for someone else hate so love in the end you know I, and and i guess that was kind of like a, a little bit of what stayed with me the first time i watched it and it's it not that it, it changed for in the way that it was expanded in the way that i thought about it the movie talks about it and um so it's it's again a movie like no other I uh, 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 I I ever seen and I'm sure like no other I'll ever see. That doesn't mean that it's the best movie I've ever watched, but it's definitely something a movie to watch, and I, I can recommend that enough. So I think I, I can leave it at that. What do you think? Awesome, awesome. You want to go first or want me to go? It, it's it does you. I, I, I'll go. I'll go the way. Uh, this is a fun movie to watch. Uh, it, it touches, uh, it, writes, it raises very, very deep existential and scientific questions about time traveling, most, most of all, and the multiverses and the repercussions of love or causality, cause and effect. Uh, it's a very thought provoking movie on, a, on that aspect. Uh, again, it has a very tasteful and unique uh, signature 
uh, when it comes to mm. the way it's made. Uh, it, it's like you're watching a live action anime. Mm. Which, by the way, Robert mentioned that there was a manga about this, which I've been looking. So if any of you oh, yes, please. know about it, please. send it to me. Because I, I found something, but it's not about a she's cyborg, cyborg. It's like about a guy that falls in love with a girl, but there's no cyborg yeah. or time travel or anything. I'm like, oh my God, come on. And I even looked for the Japanese title, and the yeah. Japanese title is from something else, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I think it's a must watch, and it's a fun watch that you can enjoy several times too. Uh, mm. it's, it's not something that will get you tired. I think that that the uniqueness to it uh, makes it so enjoyable because you don't come across something like this every day. And and honestly, thanks to whoever did whatever in another timeline, it came back to Voodoo and we could find it. Thank you. I, pre- <laughs> I really appreciate it. I, I wanted to buy it and I bought it. It was only about 10 bucks. Yeah. If so. not, it's people like Ray that buy Blu-rays, so they are not affected by changing timelines. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you see? <laughs> the importance of Blu-rays, they actually don't get affected by changing timelines, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I would definitely, it's a movie that, it's a must watch and it's enjoyable. You're not going to see something like that. So far, not again. I uh, haven't seen anything like that so far in the, in the present that I could compare it to, if you yeah. think about it. I, I This is unique in that perspective. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, my last impression, um, it, it's, it's amazing to me uh, that this film affects me every single time that I watch it. Typically, when I watch something and I watch it and I watch it, the effect just wean down, mm-hmm. right? Granted, the very first time that I watched this film, um, it's still the most uh, effect that this film had on, on me. Um, it, it's emotionally, it was very emotionally draining and, and emotionally satisfying when it came to the end. Um, it Yesterday I saw it. It, granted, it did not affect me at that level, but it still affected me. And and yeah, there was a part where she was actually being cut in half, and, and you were getting emotional. And what I was saying is like, why she's not walking her tail in her spine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so, I think you didn't get that emotional because because Captain Chaos was was there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I am. You're, welcome. Be, you're welcome. Believe me, believe me, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's in the room. I, I, if I cry and, and get yeah. destroyed, I get destroyed in front of everybody. Um, so the only solution for me is just not watch that thing in front of other people. But who cares? Um, Beaches. <laughs> who cares? Um, so th- this film, it, it's it's it, it was dramatically draining to me. But that drain, that emotional drain, was worth it with a. With a with the ending of the film, mm-hmm. right? And and this is something that you know Captain Chaos jokes about um, because I am, in fact, Admiral Happy Endings. However, Lieutenant Happy Endings, <laughs> right here. However, um, and, and this is a conversation that I had also. Um, if it was that the only reason, I have better movies to pick that well are remo- you know, romantically mm-hmm. uh, or, or, dr- or dramatically. Uh, better when it comes to this. I think what makes this movie unique is it, it, the combination of the rom-com aspect of it, the sci-fi and comedy, and how that's presented with its aesthetics. Mm-hmm. And of course, the acting plays big part in it, obviously. It's a combination. It's oh, a perfect... On, the actress, she's gorgeous. She's eye candy. <laughs> I think she's the most beautiful Japanese woman I've ever seen. <laughs> no, uh, just kidding, but she's... <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. But, not... it, but I bet the movie was like one of those things that, that not even the creators thought they would end up with. Well, it, it, I believe that to, to a point because... Well, yeah, I do believe that because when you create something... Uh, and that goes f- for any story, mm-hmm. for any TV show, any movie, any book. Um, you have no idea where that's going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a story, and that story will probably end up going through a rewrites and recycles until it gets to a point where you could actually say, okay, this is a finished product, and this is what I like to. And even when you start filming, there's always going to be changes uh, to that, you know, the director and the editor of the film. So, I mean, 
during the filming, uh, once you finish filming, there's also changes. Um, so it, this is the reason why I said, you know, I'd be, I, I do agree with your, 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 your point there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and why I said it was a perfect storm, um, mm. uh, because the story is great. The acting is great. The way it was presented was great. Um, so it's a combination of all those things. Mm -hmm. And and the sci-fi aspect and, and the way that you have a thought experiment of what would happen with multiple changes in the same timeline. It's something that I haven't really seen much on sci-fi. And this is something that I really appreciate about this film. And, and the more that I actually um, watch this film, the more I realize uh, about the concept of this film. And, and, and this is uh, evident from the multiple times that I watched this film. And I couldn't tell you how many times I have watch, watched this film. It's one of my favorite films. Uh, by the way, to answer your question, mm -hmm. the actress slash model, um, I think she has fully crossed over to the actress uh, side of things. She initially was a model. Uh, is Hakura Ayase. Um, and and she's like my Japanese Bori Nabakari, bro. I, <laughs> I I I I don't know if you would agree with me, but as an actress, it makes sense to me why she crossed over completely to being an actress. Yeah. Because in this film, she was amazing. Because think about it, she's technically playing three different people. Yeah. And did it convincingly. And, and I mean, and I mean, for you and I, it's easier than for the common folk. Mm -hmm that will do a review on a movie because we understand also the cultural filter uh, on that side of the spectrum. But mm -hmm. we understand that Japanese are not the same as Occidental people, for mm -hmm. example. Yes. So we understand the mannerisms and everything where the three types of personality she plays, we can see complete differences mm -hmm. in them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Actually, technically four... If you count the other brief moment for the little, the, you know, when she was a, a teenager in the future. Yes. yes so yes, true. that was just a brief moment there. True, but true. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And, and that is the reason why I, I, I love the film because it, it, it touches all my boxes, right? Uh, it, it, the dramatic side of it, the, the romantic mm -hmm. side of it, the scientific side of it. It just keeps me going mentally as mm -hmm. I watch this film. Absolutely. Awesome. So I think that is a cue to go to move on to our next segment. Yeah. Do we have much science to talk about though? Well, let's see. The science and sci-fi. The science and sci-fi. <laughs> it's amazing the perspectives on, on hearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to that episode. I'll show you. You put it twice and you said two different things. <laughs> you did that. Well, I didn't, I only recorded once, but anyways. <laughs> Um, I only wrote a couple of things that I thought it was, uh, it was interesting. And I don't know if you want to take on one. I, I can, uh, let's, let me take on the first one. Um, and this is something that we have talked so much about. And I don't think I'll get tired of talking about. Uh, this uh, film talks about something that is very present in today's life uh, and is artificial, artificial intelligence or AI. Mm -hmm. um, the, the movie likely involves the concept of artificial intelligence where machines and robots are programmed to perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. Real world AI is a rapidly evolving field with applications in various domains, including robotics, robotics, natural language processing, and machine learning. Now, I, I think we did not quite have a singularity in this movie. And I don't no. know if you guys agree with this. Uh, she was just following. Uh, well, maybe. It was. I think that might might have been like an infant part of dumb AI being more advanced. Uh, or like what would happen if you put dumb AI on a long spam of life? It eventually will become something. That's what I was going to say. I was going to correct myself because at the end of the film, we cannot see a singularity when she says, I see your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the only time we see it. It's very brief and, and it's kind of really interesting. Um, but this is something that is, is, is up front and center today 
with the emergence of AI in everything we do. Um, we have corporations not only using AI within their normal, uh, like the, the actual physical uh, uh, computer processes, yeah. but also in operations. Yeah, task management. Where, where someone is physically using AI in their day-to-day -day work. Mm -hmm. um, let's take, for example, a programmer, right? They're programming code. Um, they're frustrated because, because they can't find the bug. Um, granted, this is something that I recommend you do not do. Copy your source code <laughs> into, uh, but you can copy a clip of that and find out where the bug is at, right? Or, or you know, let's take it to the more benign way, uh, something that I, I would not oppose to. Uh, say, for example, you have an idea of something that you want to create, you want a starting point. Um, you can have the AI get you that starting point and then you can just kind of build on that. And that's something that's kind of, I would say, would be safe to use because mm -hmm. it's for, for the most part, uh, any programming language that you get, uh, it would actually break. They would actually have bugs because, again, uh, we don't have a singularity here. This is just a dumb AI chat GPT or whatever you choose it's to a use. Tool. It's a tool. It's not yeah. an entity. It's a tool. And that's just one example of how you use it. Uh, but today, people have used it from image generation to to like you know music generation yeah um we still i think that we're still on the on the infancy uh part of video generation and text exactly uh, because it, what it what it usually does is frame by frame images that you can see really the difference in between frames still yeah it doesn't make us the, the, the most that i've seen so far is a smooth one to two second little short mm -hmm. gift that it makes but it doesn't make a full length video Exactly. Now, I, I I strongly believe, I still believe, and I talked to many episodes before about this, the, the combination of robotics and AI would be beneficial today for humanity, even at the point of being a dumb AI, mm -hmm. because of how many people we have today that are alone in life and yeah. they get to an, uh, an old age. Um, and, and The you, difference that they can make. Yeah, and not only to the to, to you know let's get worst case worst case scenario even to the government, um, if we're able to have a robotic AI assist an elderly, uh, that takes away from uh, the finance burden that any government in the planet might have by providing that service by paying some some other person. Mm -hmm. uh, although the robotic companion might be expensive, it doesn't compare to a salary. I think I think that the 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 thing with the expensive is that at the beginning it will be like everything that is new and rising, mm -hmm. but eventually it will become more accessible. Mm -hmm. But public. even but even at the even at at the high price point, I think it's better one lump sum mm -hmm. than having someone you know for an indefinite amount of time. Granted, the, mm -hmm. that has its own problems because now we lost someone's job. Right, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's it's we're talking about. I will disagree with that because I think that 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 perspective is when we tend to antagonize uh, something that we know not know of. I think that to me, AI is not taking over in anybody's job. It's a tool no, that but we can use and it can help us, and it creates new jobs too. What I'm talking about is in this particular scenario, you have an old person, you know. Uh, and, and that person now switches to an AI companion. So now that person that was taking care of him, that was being paid on a monthly basis, uh -huh. mm -hmm. is no longer being paid because this person has. So that's one bad thing about it. But the good thing is the fact that this person might not be able to afford that person to take care of him. Exactly. And that's the issue that we're having today mm -hmm. and why I think the emergence of robotics. And, and I know I'm kind of touching on the second I don't no, but that's theory. fine. I mean, these are these are the, the non-romantic or glamorous parts of life that nobody talks about, you know? Because what happens when that person is not able to afford? It disrupts their families or whoever they have around because then they either have to take on that or this person's life is going to be very sad and probably horrible, you know? And that's what, see, that is... Then a person is neglected. That is the happy ending of it. Those yeah. are the people they have families. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are alone in this world. Yeah. They don't have that help. Mm -hmm. And well, that's basically where I'm concentrating. And, and even of that, some people are not lucky, lucky enough 
they, they found that second person in their life to share their life with. Mm -hmm. and, and, and believe it or not, it is an epidemic worldwide. Some yeah. countries are suffering this more than others. Uh, I would mention Japan, yeah. where the loneliness is real. Yep. Right? And some people are not lucky enough and they get to an old age by themselves. Um, robotic companionship, uh, as as disturbing as it might sound, on that aspect is necessary for that person that lives alone. It is a psychological concept. Um that is necessary for, for, you know, we're, we're social animals. We are predestined <laughs> to, <laughs> we're predestined to, 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 to have companionship, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, when, whenever we don't have companionship, that's when we have that epidemic right now where there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. are alone. So having a companion for someone is, and I'm painting a scenario, right? I'm painting mm -hmm. someone that has maybe gotten to the age of 90 and they're alone and they're sad. They don't have family. They don't have a companion. Uh, this is a godsend to be able to have yeah. a Salvation. human a companion AI to not only assist them in their old age, but being the companion, being a source of conversation. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think it's definitely a help, a help, and, and the reason why technology has always come is to help. Um, personally, I don't think it would ever um uh take the place of real human interaction, but but. But definitely, definitely, it does like help. AI would help with medical advance. It's already helping yes. with medical diagnosis in a way that humans can like. And it would reach a point where you would need to to go through some AI assistance in order to understand that your true diagnosis more than human interaction. So, to certain degrees, it will help humanity beyond what human touch can. Um, and uh, but but definitely and and what Gio was saying, it will become more affordable. I I begin to think, mm -hmm. you know, I begin to think like iPhones are still expensive, right? But right now you can buy a smartphone for thirty dollars, and of course it's not the same of an iPhone. Back then when it was divided between flip phones and smartphones, it was something not accessible. And, and no, and, and if you put it into perspective, a thirty dollars smartphone that you can buy in Amazon today does more than the first iPhone ever was yes. ever did and, and, and or the second or the third or even the fourth iPhone the iPhone 4s or whatnot you you have a bigger screen and and just the way it has it has <laughs> simplified you know in the past the only way that you could send an email was having a computer mm -hmm. and and a computer was way too more much more expensive than so it has facilitated you can send an email from a thirty dollar smartphone now. Mm -hmm. You could, you could, you could download apps in order. To, you could make a profit. You could do a, download a right share app. You could, so, it's, in a way, technology helps, and that's just like there's no way for us to really be able. You know, we have sci-fi, and, and we would even have our expectations um, a, a exceeded, mm -hmm. even with our sci-fi thought experiment called Science Fiction Remnant. So um not sure if you want to take on an other or anything well, else. I was going to talk, actually, about the ethical consideration in AI. <laughs> the real-world discussion around AI often involves ethical considerations, such as ensuring responsible AI development, addressing uh, biases in algorithm, and defining ethical guidelines for AI applications. These are considerations that may be relevant to the ethical dilemmas portrayed in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I I think, and we have actually talked about this in, in previous episodes, I think that the, the main issue, uh, which is paradoxical for me to say this, the main issue is that we're trying to create a system that it comes close to us. And that is the, big, the biggest fault because we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, we, we are full of, um, um, you know, ethical dilemmas uh, mm -hmm. within ourselves, uh, some more than others, um, ethical, ethical questions. And, and uh, we have tons and tons of biases um, that we have to consider before we take any decision. So in, in, in trying to model a system after us uh, is, is modeling after imperfection. Yes. Right? And and, and and granted, I mean, right now we have a big problem in AI, which is uh, the biases, 
right? AI has a lot of biases right now. This is something that we're trying to mitigate. Uh, but the problem is, um, until we can have, until we have an AI that models itself after what it wants to model, um, it, it's not going to be. And what that baseline is? It, 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 I guess it models itself after a perf, a a perfect and sustainable ideal. Um, and then what is a perfect and sustainable idea exactly. if it's not the bias of the person that created you? That's another issue, too. Mm -hmm. It's like if it's not going to be modeled after humans, which it cannot, if we want, if you don't want biases, it cannot be modeled after humans. Uh, but if that's the case, then what is it going to be modeled after? Mm -hmm. And is it going to have the best interest at heart? With us, hence why we're having sci-fi many times the three laws that I think I think were originally created by Isaac Asimov. Yeah, uh, those three laws that prevents them from turning against us, right? Mm. But at the same time, if you think about it, it's what's right or wrong. Maybe something that is right means the end of humanity because of how destructive we could be. You know, we are technically a virus. So it, yeah. I mean, I mean, the way that we behave over, over Earth, we destroy and don't replace, you know? Well, I, I, I feel like we're going into another podcast about Centennial, <laughs> centennial Man or iRobot. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's quite related to it mm -hmm. when it, you think about AI. Here, here is more about human AI, really, how you see how, she, how she's learning. And it's not really singularity like you point out earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to I wanna interrupt before we continue, because I know some people, we're talking about the three laws of robotics, and I some people that hear that listen to this might not know what those are. Um, the, I don't know what they are. The three laws of robotics. Uh, role number one, a robot must not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Rule number two, a robot must obey the order given in by human beings, except when such orders could conflict with the first law. And the last law, number three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Each, each consecutive law creates a paradox to the next one. Have you, do you notice that? Mm -hmm. Do you notice that? And, and, and here you don't get to really see that playing out at all. It's it's total service what she does, you know? <laughs> she loves him, but she's really coming initially the robot because she was sent, you know? In, and it, she learns to love him. In essence, I she's think... She's selfless towards him. In essence, I think it kind of she kind of follows it uh, when we look at the scene where the girl slaps him. Yeah. And, and, and it breaks the first rule right there. She hurt a human. You know, don't go further. Uh, Atlas. Mm. I've seen militarized videos of Atlas. What's it going to be used for? It's not for shooting range, you know? So things can be weaponized and used. Mm. Uh, uh, but that's not AI anymore then. That's dumb AI mm. being programmed with a, a, a basis on what to do and how to work to obey blindly. Uh, yeah. a ruling program you know and, and you know just to be clear we're talking about after the singularity we're yes. not talking about you know dome ai we have the beginnings of dome ai right now mm -hmm. um and, and i'm sure you probably have a different name for it but I, i'm i still call it dome ai for me it's dome ai and singularity that's it it's, only it's not self-aware <laughs> bottom line you know exactly. dome ai is not self-aware it, it will never will be it can imitate yes well, yeah. will make you think it's self-aware, but there is many intricate ways that you can really smartly, you can really outsmart it and make it crash against its own nature to show you that it's mm. not self-aware, you know? Yeah. Okay. So anything else that we'd like to add? I, th I, th I think so. I think no, because I added something about time traveling back and forth and the repercussions, but we talk yeah. plenty, plenty, plenty in depth about that. Well, um, I think that has value. If you want to go ahead and um, mention that, um, it, 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 I know we talked about it, but it's, the concepts are, are interesting. So, so what, I, what I wrote about is time traveling and changing the past and basically time traveling through time and continuously altering the past initiates a cascade of intricate repercussions. Each change ripples through history, reshaping events, individuals, and entire societies in unforeseen ways. What might seem as a small 
tweak in one era can verge into monumental transformations in another. Paradoxes emerge as a fabric of reality strains under the weight of conflict timelines, which actually like is, is one of the main questions that like, kept me going, but I mean, they were very nice and strawberry to really not ruin the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. If you think about it, and which it was nice. It worked out perfectly, I think, in the movie. Yeah. Uh, the tiniest shift might birth new civilizations or obliterate existing ones. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking many times throughout yes. the movie. Uh, creating an intricate tapestry of interconnected but divergent realities, such as alterations not only challenge the integrity of the past, but also cast an uncertain shadow over the present and future, questioning the very essence of existence and the stability of cause and effect, hence causality. Yes. And this is something this, this film has a lot of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I feel this concludes this episode. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ricardo, thank you for coming back. Uh, Pleasure. For a second episode. Uh, it was long overdue. Um, uh, it was, he, uh, Ricardo was with us in season one, and it's only uh, justice that he comes back for season two. Yeah, so. he was awesome. <laughs> Give it up, man. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, again, thank you so much uh, for uh, all of you to um, being our, our audience, our listeners. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you sticking with us during our hiatus. I know uh, it's it's kind of hard when you find something you like and all of a sudden you can't consume it. Uh, it happens to us, especially mm -hmm. when uh, season one of an anime that I love ends. <laughs> and I have to wait another year for season two so um luckily for you guys you don't have to wait that long so mm. i really appreciate you guys coming back um after i hate us uh to 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 being being with us uh and and and, and share another episode um we, we really really appreciate it uh we appreciate your your um interaction your engagement with the show your engagement with us uh remind you that we uh, do have a website at sciencefictionremnant.com uh, we also ha uh, are on all the socials. Uh, reach out to us. Make sure you use the This Is Sci-Fi hashtag so we can uh, share on the stuff that you like. Um, we always are looking forward for new sci-fi. And of course, uh, if you want to come, uh, continue the conversation, uh, not only with us, but about stuff that we might have said, uh, stuff that you want us to cover in the future, or anything else, um, uh, to talk about sci-fi or talking about with us, um, the host, I invite you uh, guys to come over to our uh, Discord server. Uh, the link is in the description. And uh, with that, I actually thank you again very, very much for your uh, engagement and your love for the show. We really, really, really appreciate it. We would not be here if it wasn't for you. Uh, and so we do... We do say this from the bottom of our heart. Thank you so much yes, for being with us. Thank you. And we can't wait to have you for the next episode. See you next time. Take care.